Okay, so I love business. I love business because business, if you look at the design of business in the chart, it goes from, well, it really is the entire ego circuit, but it's changing because the 5027 is getting added to the circuitry for business. I love business not because of the money. I literally could care less. In fact, uh, I recently hired someone to help me get things a little bit more organized on that end. And it turned out that I was actually paying myself less than I pay my team, which is, is okay, right? Sort of, because I, I don't know, I'm working on that piece. I do care a lot about impact. I do care a lot about service because I see what's possible in the world and I know what's changing. And to be quite frank with you, as a mother and now a grandmother, and I'm not saying that's the only thing that can form this perspective because some of us are just born with that deep caring. A lot of you are, some of us carry it because of our ancestral lineage and the families that we were raised in. And we were taught from the very beginning to think about the world through the lens of many generations. We're at a really, really important time on this planet and business promises to be a vehicle that can support the creation of well-being. Business can become a portal of transformation from pain and fear to something of greater value. And it really is the arena, if you will, where to a certain degree, we are all working through our value piece so that we can turn around and create more value for others. There is something really powerful, and I'll just say, being at this phase in my business development, after 23 years of slugging it away at the same business for a long, long time, it's pretty exciting to be able, if somebody emails me and says, I really can't do this class right now, but I'm, I really know that I'm supposed to do it, to be able to say, fine, have it. You know, I, in my fantasy world, I could just do that all day long. Here, have a class. You have a class. You have one too. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I do have people in my household that likes to eat, including the dogs. Um, but um, so I study business a lot. And I've been a student of business and business practices a lot because my background is not in business at all. You know, my, my background is in nursing. Um, and nurses don't know anything about money for the most part. <laughs> and, um, and my other background is in journalism. And they really don't know anything about money. Um, so, and then definitely don't know anything about marketing. I do know how to communicate. Being a nurse and a journalist gave me a lot of good skills at communication. So I've studied marketing over the years. I start, went to my very first marketing seminar in 2003. I was one of three women in a room of hundreds of men. The marketing arena, the entire stage, the whole pitch fest, which is what it ended up being for the weekend, was all men pitching. And men who were pitching, you know, they were pitching a lot of stuff, a lot of hype, a lot of money. I had a scholarship to that event that I had won because I made a video about how all my money went to feeding my kids because I was a full-time single parent at that point in time. And I was invited to have dinner with the presenters and they were all newly married, but, they, but it wasn't their first marriage. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get divorced and you shouldn't get remarried and I'm not judging any of that. They all had literally, and I kid you not, they literally all had Russian model wives, which I thought was very fascinating. Like, where did they get these women? <laughs> um, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but then they all went out to strip club afterwards. And I was like, this is not a vibe that I want to be in. I am not saying that there aren't people in marketing who have high integrity. I know there are, because I've met a few of them. In the early 2000s, these guys were obsessed with get rich quick schemes, hacks, and ways in which you could use the internet to make a quick buck. They were making fake websites, putting affiliate links on, from face, on, on fake websites, buying Google AdWords, driving traffic to fake websites. They weren't creating content. They weren't serving. They were finding the latest trick. 
Now, what has happened in response to that is that Google and all these other search engines, browsers, et cetera, they've started to go, okay, wait, time out. The internet is supposed to be a resource of information for people. And we keep having to figure out how to game the system in response to this so that we can make sure we're promoting content and not somebody's free website with a, a, an affiliate link on it. I will also not sit here and tell you Google is totally innocent and they've done nothing wrong because the creep factor of what's happening in our marketing arena is unbelievable. I can't even, the stuff I heard last week that I heard from Harvard psychologists who studied how Google, by shifting up the rankings of how they presented information about politicians, can change the outcomes of an election, and they do. And I, this isn't political because they've, it's affected both sides of the spectrum. So this isn't about right or left. This is about recognizing that the election, just by simply putting go vote on the, on the Google homepage on voting day in America, changes voter outcome. Maybe it's deliberate, maybe it's not. I sat and I went to the con a conference last week that the name of the conference was called Subversion. It was a conference that was about the future of marketing. Me and my stupid, naive bubble brain, because I'm like, I live in this beautiful bubble with all these really high vibing, deeply intentional people who want to serve, right? I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna talk about the future of the world and how we're gonna impact and serve each other better and da 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 da. And I get there and I'm like, oh, ha, I'm the only woman in the room again. What's this gonna be like? I wasn't the only one, there were a handful of women and not many. Um, so it was basically uh, four days of marketing hacks, tricks, tactics, strategies that were an attempt to give you a way to work around Google's policies around, you gotta create content guys. So it was different ways that you can fake creating content and fill a bunch of keywords in and hide the page on your website so that Google wouldn't know that you were actually not actually posting content that you were just making stuff up so you could get good search engine rankings. I also had some really disturbing work. There were some really disturbing workshops, for example, I, pro I literally probably shouldn't even say this on Zoom because data collection happens everywhere and I'm not being paranoid about this. They're literally, you can literally buy lists of what's called digital listening data. Do you know what that is? This is the information that is gathered from your Alexa and your Android phones. They collect it and then they sell it. You can go buy it. If you go to, a, there are people who broker marketing lists, you can go buy a digital listening device. This device can tell you how many times does somebody in a household have sex and what kind of sex are they having? Cause they can hear it. Literally, I'm not kidding. I mean, you can learn, you can buy a lot of information about groups of people. And, and, and the, the theme of this convert of, of this particular workshop was hey, let's go old school, let's go analog. That's gonna be the wave of the future, but they're going analog by buying digital listening data and then mailing postcards to people with digital from digital listening data. <laughs> There's so much I don't wanna unpack for you because I literally walked away going, why, why? I feel like I've just stepped into some dystopian world that I don't understand. There was a friend of mine who was there who is actually also a human design person. He's a, he, his, uh, he's a CEO trainer and a coach and he works with C-suite entrepreneurs and he's also a, a, a jujitsu jiu jiu master. And he has this whole way of, he brings, he has a beautiful home and he brings CEOs into his home for a weekend retreat. And he basically throws them down on the mat and does jujitsu with them and uses jujitsu as this teaching tool. He's a sweet, sweet man. And at the end of the event, I said, so what was your takeaway? Cause I was starting to feel like, wow, I'm really out of step with the mainstream. And he said, you know, honestly, he said, my takeaway is I'm just gonna be myself. 
and I'm not going to worry about all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, me too. But here's, you know, a couple of things I just want to say. There was not a single person who was not white in that room. There were three women and 45 men. There was not a single woman on stage. I asked, hey, why are there only men on stage? And they said, oh, well, we couldn't find any women because apparently women don't do marketing at all. So I was like, okay. And obviously people with dark skin don't either. Um, so, you know, the rest of us, I don't know, we're just sitting here being listened to, I guess. Um, part of why there aren't any women is because women, I think about 15 years ago, looked at their traditional marketing world and said, you know what, we're not even gonna do that. We're just gonna do women in business over here because that's just gross what you guys are doing over there. So I have built over the course of 23 years, a seven figure business. I don't have a mil millions and billions of dollars. I drive a Kia. I just bought a tiny farmhouse in a little town in Wisconsin. It's the first home I've owned in more than, well, in 25 years because I couldn't afford one. Let's just be clear. It wasn't because I was like, I don't want a house. It was like, I couldn't afford a house. But I'm really proud of the business that I've built. I'm very, very proud of it. And I'm proud of it because for many reasons. And one of the things I want to share with you all is that it has taken about 21 years to really hit a good stride where it's like, okay, I don't have to worry about money anymore. And that, that, that's really powerful because it did give me a whole different base from which I can give and share and expand. And that's pretty fun. I have, except for boosting a Facebook post here and there, never paid for advertising. I built this business by writing love letters to my clients or my, I don't like calling them clients, my people a couple of times a week. I feel like every time I write a letter or a sell, sell something, it's a love note. And I feel like I've done a really good job of being true to myself and building a community and, and creating a business that's really rooted deeply in relationships and community. I think that's, if you want to label it, the feminine way of marketing. That's feminine marketing, right? We connect, we share, we support each other, we lift each other up, we celebrate each other, we push each other out into the world, we acknowledge and recognize each other, we floof each other's auras, and and we build community. And every single really powerful millionaire plus businesswoman that I've seen operating out in the world, at least in this field, does well when she build when not she, not well, I'll say she, when she builds community, there are men who do it well too. So I don't want to make it gender-based at all. But the feminine way of doing business builds relationships. And they're real, and, and in the feminine world, in feminine business, or I'll call it quantum, let's call it quantum business. So we take the gender piece out of it. In the quantum business, you build community and you're relentlessly authentic and you do the right thing. Even if it terrifies you and you think you might not make a profit at it, you stick to your guns and you don't do something. I don't want to say that either. You stick to your integrity and you don't buy listening data and go sell it because how is that making you any different than than the big guys who you claim that you don't like. You're doing the same thing. You know, it's just moving deck chairs around on the Titanic. There was not a single conversation about what's the future going to be like. And I think, you know, I walked away going, you know, I feel like the, the, the really subversive thing to do is to be authentic and to treat people well and to not spy on them, you know, I don't think the government's allowed to do that. That's like, wait, wasn't that a bad thing to do at Watergate? That was not allowed. Why are we doing it now, right? Um, be kind to people. Give people opportunities. Be yourself. And, and keep plugging it away at it over time. 
and make everything you create an offering of love to the world. And I promise you, you that's going to sell. And it's not going to matter how big your list is. It's not going to matter if how many 5,000 billion times you post on Instagram or not. All the little rules that we have about business and business success and tactics and strategies. And yeah, it'll sell for a very short period of time. You'll, you'll, have, you'll have a flash if you do some tactic or strategy, you will. But if your intention is to make a deep and powerful impact on the world, to be an agent of transformation, to be a midwife to a new world, and to do it in such a way that you can go to bed at night and sleep and not have your conscience wake you up at three o'clock in the morning and really serve people, just be yourself. Literally just be yourself and love people. And if you have a 5027, fix them good food. <laughs> or, you know, I am really proud of all of you. I'm really proud of all of you who have the courage to continue to just show up as yourself and do good work in the world. It might seem like in the short run sometimes that that's not cutting it. I, I, had, I have had more than a decade of pretty darn lean years, really lean years. But I always knew that, that it would be okay, that we would be held, that if I took a leap and did something that my sacral told me to do, but my brain was like, what the crap are you doing, lady? That the sacral was always right. And that we'd all do better if we all do better. So. I, I wanted to start with that. I know you guys have questions, but I, I just really wanted to tell you that because I really want us to continue to be extraordinarily aware, first of all, of the bubble that we're in that's really lovely. <laughs> and to know that the more we build this out and the more we expand on this beautiful bubble that we have, the more I think we're gonna very quietly subvert the dominant paradigm for sure because eventually people are gonna go, I, I, I want what they have. This, this, I'm fighting all this stuff over here. That's not working for me either. I, I just wanna go over here and be happy and do good stuff. Maybe good isn't even the right word. And you're making a powerful difference in the world. You really are. The more each and every one of us stand up and say, mm, that's, that's not how we do it. That's, that's not what we're going to do. We're not going to keep playing this game anymore. There's no lack. There's no scarcity. There's no less than, more than. I mean, yes, it exists in the material world, but in the, in the conscious world that we're building, that's not going to be a part of that paradigm anymore. And we're just going to keep moving the staff forward step by step and expanding on what we're doing here. Don't ever devalue what you're doing. And especially don't devalue it if in this moment, or even in a retracted period of time, it's feeling like, ah, but it's not what I want it or need it to be. You will get there. You just have to keep taking one step at a time and trusting your heart and your sacral or whatever else you have inside of your design that you trust, but mostly your heart. Don't forget that your heart has 40,000 more neural connections to the brain than the brain has to the heart. It's constantly talking to you. Let it lead in everything, even your marketing. <laughs>